Giorgio Moroder is a composer, engineer and producer whose influence on music has earned him the nickname the father of disco. That's not surprising, considering his amazing work with Donna Summer in the 70s. But his extended CV spans from film scores to catchy pop hits. Through all of his work, though, is a passion for groundbreaking innovation. This is his story and a look into how some of his best works were made. Giorgio is from the Alpine valleys of the South Tyrol region of northern Italy, where both Italian and German is spoken, which is why he has a German accent and an Italian name. Teaching himself to play guitar at age 15, he quickly found work playing in bars and hotels, and by 18 he was touring Europe, performing by night and by day, experimenting with recording by using two Revox reel-to-reel recorders. After moving to Berlin at age 25, he tried his hand at being a studio engineer, helping other artists to create hits, but he really wanted to explore being an artist in his own right, which proved to be a great venture, as he scored his first hit as a co-writer with the song Ich Spren alle Ketten, which means breaking all chains. This was quickly followed up by his first hit as a performer, with co-writer Michael Holm, with the single Mendocino. In 1968, after a couple of years in Berlin, Giorgio moved to Munich and continued to have success, picking up a gold record for the ultra-poppy song Lucky Look. This then enabled him to set up his own recording studio, which was named Musicland Studios. The studio was situated in the basement of the Arabella high-rise building in Munich and based around a 16-track machine into a Helios console. Despite having a great technical setup with the Helios being one of the most sought-after desks around, the room itself was very small and right next to the building's heating system, making the studio incredibly hot and uncomfortable to work in. Engineer Reinhold Mack advised Giorgio that in order to bring in the big acts, the studio would have to expand and preferably away from the heater. Although this wouldn't happen without another big hit, and luckily he managed to have one with Son of My Father. The song features lyrics written by Giorgio's then assistant, Pete Bellotti. Although they recorded their own version, it was the British group Chicory Tip that took it to the top of the charts. Armed with more funds from the hit and a contract with Phonogram, Musicland was further being developed into a proper studio, and the first client to walk through the doors was Mark Bolan. Mark was greeted with bare concrete and wires, but reassured the studio would be ready in time for him to start recording when he needed it. And it was with T-Rex recording the album Zinc Alloy and Hidden Riders of Tomorrow with Tony Visconti at the helm. Musicland quickly became one of the main places to record with bands such as Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, The Rolling Stones, Queen and ELO, who recorded their massive hit Mr. Blue Sky There. The song that helped all that happen, Son of My Father, was initially released by Murrow himself and showcased the Moog synthesizer. Initially inspired by the Wendy Carlos album Switched on Bark released in 1968, which was a pioneering album that featured Bach's music being played with only a modular Moog and no other instruments. Giorgio sought the instrument for himself, but finding out how expensive it would actually be to buy, he looked for someone he could rent one from. Fortunately, the classic composer, Eberhard Schoner, had the right synth for the job, namely a Moog 3P. And since the Moog was notoriously temperamental, they also needed to hire Schoner's engineer, Robbie Wedel, to come with it. Moroder admitted at the time, I needed him because even if I owned one, I wouldn't have been able to get any sound out of it. He used the synthesizer extensively from then, but a not so favorable review would say that Giorgio was using the Moog as a gimmick and he was unable to have a hit without one. He was quite offended by this and decided that he would stop using them, which he did. That was of course until some years later when producing a track for a certain artist named Donna Summer. After landing a role in the musical Hair for the show's Munich production, she recorded at Musicland Studios as a backing singer and her talents attracted the attention of Pete Bellotti and Giorgio, and she signed to their label Oasis in 1974. Summer's first album on the label, Lady of the Night, became a huge hit in the Netherlands, Sweden and Germany, with the songs The Hostage and Lady of the Night being big hits. In 1975, Summer collaborated with Giorgio and Pete Bellotti on the song Love to Love You Baby. It was initially intended for another artist, with Donna only providing vocals for the demo. Although the artist did record it, Moroda preferred Summer's version, and after playing it at an industry party hosted by Neil Bogart, who was the president of Casablanca Records, the song became a massive hit. Bogart requested a longer version for discos, leading to the creation of a 17-minute version. Casablanca signed Summer, and the single was released in November 1975. The seven-inch version was promoted on radio stations, while the 17-minute version was a favorite in the clubs. Love to Love You Baby climbed to number two on the US Hot 100 charts by early 1976, and achieved gold status. The song caused controversy though, due to Summer's suggestive sounds, leading some American stations to refuse to play it. However, it found success in Europe and made the top five in the United Kingdom, even with a BBC ban in place. In 1977, Summer released the concept album, I Remember Yesterday. 
The idea for the album was to have the songs represent different ages, past, present and beyond. I Feel Love definitely lives up to the futuristic design brief and could easily be considered ground zero for modern dance music, with a pulsating hypnotic synth line and a minimalistic but incredible vocal. The song took the discos by storm. Giorgio's return to using the Moog was emphatic. In fact, all the parts were created with the Moog, including the rhythmical hi-hat parts. The only part that wasn't the Moog is the kick drum. They felt that it was just too soft and wanted an actual acoustic kick to bring some punch to the four on the floor rhythm. This was played by session drummer Keith Forsey, who went on to be a successful producer in his own right. He famously wrote Don't You Forget About Me, performed by Simple Minds, which interestingly was actually intended for Billy Idol. We got the first line down, Bellotti recalled. So the engineer, Robbie Wadle, said, OK, do you want to sync the next track? We didn't even know what he meant. So he says, I've laid down a sync tone for the Moog so that anything we record on the next track is going to lock into that. When we put it in, it was absolutely spot on. It was a revelation for us. The most astounding thing about Robbie Wadle, who was the unsung hero of all this, is that Robert Moog didn't even know about it. He had no idea the syncing was even possible. To embellish the rhythm, they panned the synth with one side having a delay creating a more complicated pattern. This sounded incredible when listening on both speakers or on headphones, but Giorgio didn't notice it in some clubs that had speakers far apart. One side had an offbeat accent that confused dancers. I'm glad he didn't second guess this though as it sounds amazing. After hours of trial and error, then slowly pieced together the rhythm instruments. From the interjecting cymbal sounds, they produced white noise using the machine's envelopes and cut it up. Meanwhile, the distinctive bass line was a sequence sound that Wadle produced. The Moog was really fun to work with, but the problem was, it would go out of tune every few minutes, Moroda remembered. It was a disaster. With I Feel Love, I think we did 20 or 30 seconds, then stop. Then we go back, tune it, and drop it in. It was quite a job. But what a job. It sounded revolutionary. And Brian Eno told David Bowie, I Feel Love would change the face of club music for the next 15 years. He famously rushed into the studio where he was recording with Bowie, brandishing the single and declaring, This is it. Look no further. The song is widely recognised as having revolutionised dance music. It introduced a significant departure from lush acoustic strings and acoustic drums, and replacing it with a sound that was metronomic, precise and futuristic. While the song's emotional content remained soulful and human, its execution felt entirely mechanical. It laid the groundwork for the development of house music and played a crucial role in shaping the entire landscape of what would become described as EDM. At the time, the king of disco in New York was the gallery's Nicky Ciano, who remembers Casablanca head of promotion Mark Paul Simon turning up to a hot pack party at the club in summer 1977 with an acetate of the Unyet release single and asking him to play it. Everyone knew DJs didn't play anything at a packed club without previewing it first, says Nicky, who agreed to listen to it on the headphones. I took a deep breath and put on the heavy disc on my third turntable. I put my ear up to the headphones expecting the very good Donna Summer Giorgio production, but it wasn't. I heard a syncopated synth line that was fresh than anything I'd heard in years. It wasn't a new record, it was a new style of production. I trusted my instincts and mixed it in. Rarely a crowd dances to a record so enthusiastically on first listen. The room exploded and I experienced the sound that would change club songs forever. The synthesizer was very much in vogue again and Giorgio used it extensively while composing the soundtrack to the film Midnight Express. His work was met with universal praise and earned Giorgio an Oscar for Best Original Score. He was able to follow up on his success with film scoring by composing music for the film Scarface and winning Best Songs for Flashdance What a Feeling from the film Flashdance and Best Song for Take My Breath Away from Top Gun in 1986. He also co-wrote Danger Zone from that film which was a big hit for Kenny Loggins. Another high-profile composer working with Giorgio on Top Gun was Harold Faltermeyer. Faltermeyer had been working with Giorgio at Musicland since the Donna Summer days and gained a reputation for being an innovator with his use of synthesizers. Probably his most enduring piece is from the soundtrack to Beverly Hills Cop. Axel F has continued to be popular through the ages, with various remixes making it one of the most recognisable synthesizer lines of all time. Giorgio continued his prolific run through the 80s, teaming up with Phil Oakey from the Human League to record Together in Electric Dreams. He also composed the official music for the Olympics both in 1984 and 88, and the World Cup in 1990. Since then he's continued writing and producing, and was notably honoured by Daft Punk on the track Marauder by Giorgio that featured on their album Random Access Memories. He also released a solo studio album in 2015 called Deja Vu. It features collaborations with Kylie Minogue, Britney Spears, Sia and Charlie XCX. Giorgio's career was so prolific that there's a lot of work I haven't even mentioned in this video. 
He truly is a great in the world of modern music, and modern production owes a huge debt to his and his Musicland team's incredible innovation.